working now. Cool. So, uh, what we're going to talk about is uh, OS Int uh, for uh, owning or pawning uh, fintech. Uh, frank uh, disclosure: This is a clickbait uh, title. Uh, you will get value from this talk. Uh, there is there are a bunch of cool. Uh, takeaways in terms of a checklist and uh, we are around uh, both the days so feel free to come talk to us about security that's covered here and otherwise. Uh, uh, I'm Akash, uh, I'll be uh, doing the talk but uh, Abhishek who's uh, in the first row, uh, you know, he's given his additional inputs and there are two more of us wearing AppSeco t-shirts, the, the lambda which looks like it's fallen on its face. Uh, we are around, please come please to talk to us. So, uh, obviously, uh, how many of you are familiar with the term OSINC? Perfect. So, uh, the introduction makes sense. Uh, I am going to assume that this uh, uh, track is, is meant for people who want to understand uh, uh, security issues at a level where you know their concepts not just some fancy technical terms. Is that okay to make that assumption today? Okay, cool. You are in a room uh, listening to someone, but that does not stop you from saying yes, no, maybe or go away. I understand there is a cryptocurrency talk happening in another track. So, thank you so much for staying back. Uh, so, I am going to talk about what is OSINT and what is it that we can do with it. There are many, many things you can do with many, many things, right. We will not confuse ourselves. We will stick to a couple of uh, use cases and see how they are useful for us in this uh, scenario. Attackers, and this is my assertion here, attackers tend to go after people and machines, right, at, at a very simplified uh, uh, thing, right. Uh, these are the two things that, that get exploited, either uh, there are computers, servers, uh, laptops, desktops, apps, uh, devices getting exploited through some code or, uh, you know, social engineering or something or people are getting uh, exploited or, and hacked. Usually, people manage the servers, machines and applications, okay. So, people are an important, uh, a critical aspect of this. And this will stay true till we have any kind of a robot uprising or Skynet, right. Uh, yesterday, I was in a discussion around uh, AI in uh, finance. Uh, it was a round table uh, by CIS and 50P. It was ex extremely useful to uh, get uh, the point of view of lawyers and all about how, th how it worries them, how law will take uh, over and how law will manage when there are like uh, decisions and intelligence provided by programs and you know we do not know what the outcome will be. So, till we reach there, uh, uh, people are important. So, what is OSINT? The, the basic uh, slide for you. You are a person, you have access to credentials, credentials are your username, passwords, API keys, uh, whatever allows you to, uh, you know, uh, say to a system that, you know, this is me uh, and I have something that uh, is not in the system, but the system understands that value, like a pre-shared value. When you enter the password, the server knows the password, it is able to compare, yeah, this is the password that I expected, so you, this is who you are, that is how you are identifying yourself. People also uh, share activities on uh, social media. Uh, they go to Stack Overflow and you know tell people that what they want to learn and uh, they go to a bunch of other places uh, like a restaurant and say what they like to eat or at least what they like to click the photo of what they like to eat, right. And uh, all these things are available for people to, attackers to figure out can I make sense of this somehow, can I misuse it somehow. Machines typically have identifiers like an IP address, uh, a domain or a host, right and there are certificates because now everyone says, uh, you know, we should be end to end encrypted and uh, TLS, SSL in the day and age of let us encrypt. There are many other things like uh, my colleague was saying that, hey, uh, why are we not talking about uh, all the code that gets committed to GitHub and bunch of these things. I understand, right, there are many things. Let us, let us talk about this. What I am saying is, attackers are able to make sense of this data 
and utilize it somehow ok. So, that is where we are at currently and machines typically run applications which are written by people and these are some of the, the places that uh, attackers like to go and figure out right. Uh, why LinkedIn? Because uh, LinkedIn is a place where uh, your company might be posting job openings right or uh, it will tell me what are the people uh, you know what are their uh, what is the profile what are they good at maybe they are a senior Java architect and they work at company X. So, maybe that company X has a use for a senior Java architect right and then there is a, a link to a professional blog of that person and that person is talking about you know what this cool thing I use with the uh, spring boot I it is SSO and I am doing this deploying it to some Google cloud or whatever and you are like ok this is what they want to learn or you know maybe they will learn this they are senior they will start using it in the company ok. This is just to understand the overall uh, scenario right what what can you do with Google, Google indexes everything uh, it indexes IP addresses, it indexes uh, uh, domains and hosts and sometimes even before you go to the actual website of company X you will figure out that these are the different domains or subdomains this company X has and sometimes uh, Google is able to index things when you know the application is giving an error. The error does not exist anymore but it is in the Google index right. Google makes it really simple to create a custom search engine. A custom search engine is something where uh, you just say hey these are the 5 websites I will be searching only between these 5 websites. So, give me an index which is more refreshed than the general Google search that is available ok. So, it is free for I think uh, a thousand queries or something and beyond that is 5 dollars uh, for up to a million the pricing is just uh, dirt cheap. Uh, GitHub uh, you may be familiar that people try and uh, search GitHub uh, repositories for uh, secrets being committed something happened to uh, Zomato recently uh, 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 last year I think that is the company you are talking about with the leaky bucket <laughs> just just my guess. Uh, Twitter, Facebook, Bing all these allow you to as an attacker if you were an attacker find out more about people and uh, machines without actually interacting with those people and interacting with those machines. You see the basic premise here. We are doing uh, data collection, but passively. We are finding about something or someone, but they may not be aware that we are trying to find more things about them, right. So, my wife uh, 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 you know is, is active on Instagram and Facebook and sometimes I ask her like hey who are these people on your uh, Instagram feed and she's like you know I knew this person in college and whatever I am like but who is this and they are like oh this is the uh, person they are working with I am like what is your interest and she's like no this is called social media stalking right. So, it is a thing. If you would like to learn more I am going to plug my blog here uh, it is completely nice and open and free uh, please feel free to look at things. The four references that I am putting here are the ones that we are using today. So, we have a blog about how we got a dump of uh, passwords of you know billions of usernames and passwords. Uh, it does not matter where the username and password was leaked from right that is not what we are trying to uh, find out. But what we are trying to find out is that there is a uh, dump of username and passwords and we needed cheap storage and we needed a place to quickly uh, query it right. So, we did that with the GCP. We have a guide to uh, subdomain enumeration. We, I think, list nine different methods on passively figuring out all the possible subdomains for a company's online presence without actually going to the server of or the DNS of the online, uh, the, you know, this uh, DNS server of the uh, company. We also have a uh, nice getting started uh, on OSINT if this is an area of interest for you. And I would like to believe that after this talk you would be interested in finding out what is your company or your organization exposing online. We also have something about certificate transparency. I will not really go into what this is, but every certificate that is generated now a TLS certificate uh, most people call it SSL uh, by most large providers who provide these certificates these third party trusted uh, certificates they need to go into a log. So, that anyone can verify that who generated a certificate for a particular domain. These logs have streaming APIs and you are able to find out 
interesting things like hey oh this company has suddenly you know generated a certificate for an app which does not seem like it's outside right there is no a record for this domain subdomain must be an internal app right they're doing tls internally which is a security requirement uh, and a recommendation so what we will cover today we will cover a story about when things do go wrong we will uh, talk about a global sports body we're not naming names we will talk about discovery of some information we will talk about information that could have potential potential domain takeover implications domain takeover means that some the attacker could potentially uh, control the domain and obviously then whatever the mail server is the uh, a record and all that we will share a ch security checklist for you to take back and use and we will some you know explain threats and risks using colorful diagrams uh, in boring terms they call threat modeling diagrams uh, we will not explain how to do build them but uh, we are around come talk to us later we will also share the work we did prior to this talk uh, when we decided that we're going to talk about uh, you know OSINT and, and in, in this particular space of payments and fintech uh, we will show you some st stats about the exposure of uh, a few fintech companies uh, in India and uh, approach very very light you, once you see that slide you will you are ready to uh, try this out what we will not cover we are not going to talk about application security network security at all i think shadab did a really good job anyways uh, because you know we assume that you are already following some of the guidelines right you are a payment company or you are interested in payments you are aware of these things uh, people doing third party pen testing for you if you still have questions around that we will take it after the talk uh, and you know talk about regular security stuff we are not obviously naming names we are not giving any raw data we are not uh, interested in sharing any of that at all uh, we are explaining how we did it so please feel free to go ahead uh, we are not going to talk about hey uh, how do i uh, you know uh, detect fraud by my uh, users against my app right because there are many other ways of doing that we're just going to talk about your infrastructure today so we will start with a story we will give you a simple story about what happened with a global sports body once upon a time there was a sports body then main, main website was a source of information for scores and other things they had like a management shuffle at some point and two sides emerged and uh, one side got bunch of things not really important but the other side got control of the primary domain so the twist is uh, one of the days there was like a major win some achievement the, the primary domain was listed for registration for two hundred forty nine dollars if you follow sports news you would know which one but good sense prevailed it would have been extremely embarrassing uh, if uh, the domain had been bought by an attacker and uh, you know cloned the website to show uh, sports scores but with maybe a malware uh, filled ads or something in uh, sporting metaphors I think they go dodged the bouncer the moral of the story is make sure you maintain control of what is important what's important for you uh, the primary domain uh, not many people think about the primary domain it's the way they operate the uh, you know all their apis uh, that's the base url and whatever it is it could be the sales and marketing domain or it could be the one that uh, you know uh, where all the api keys or api uh, uh, urls point to right whichever it is you have to maintain control of this you should invest in a reminder application so that you are not a laughing stock of the world right and it's not something that has happened only to a incompetent uh, sports body it can ha it has happened to technical companies tech companies domains are precious uh, if an attacker had registered it cloned the contents added malware users would have been infected and not very happy about it right so that would have been a problem so that's the main uh, takeaway invest in a calendar which has reminders i think uh, you can use google calendar it's free I think I have an animation here. The twist in the twist is still a story. Not did not happen in real life. They have a about page. In the story, they have an about page which lists an email address. In our references, we pointed out that there is this massive password dump, right, which you can like store and uh, query for. Uh, there is a password for that email address in that dump. That's the twist, and uh, we do we won't know for sure 
right ever is if the username on the site and the username used to log in to the email is it the same we will not know because we didn't try and log in and if the same username was used to register domain right if you have registered a domain you go to a registrar's website typically you have to provide an email id right it's called the admin uh, uh, domain admin email it's a cool story because we will never know it's the story of the lady or the tiger only the uh, people born before i think 1990 would know the reference but if you don't it's okay google it <laughs> after the story let's talk about uh, osint on fintech sites what did we find and what can you go back and try at home the first thing that we did was we made a list of fintech websites uh, 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 to understand you know what's what's the exposure in india what kind of websites are there what are the companies doing in india and uh, like the global sports body 40% of the total data did not enable who is privacy what is who is privacy who is privacy enables you to uh, mask the actual domain email id it will give you some uh, some kind of a you know uh, surrogate which uh, you will receive the email in your inbox but the person sending you the email will not know what the actual uh, domain id is attackers can try and go after the admin email id address to hijack domains why will they try and hijack domains uh, another story this happened to uh, a, a bitcoin company uh, around 4 years ago when you know bitcoin wasn't really this big a deal uh, the attackers uh, manage to compromise a large uh, VPS provider, a virtual uh, private server provider. I'm pretty sure some of you will have servers on that, not naming names. The only reason they compromised the provider was because they wanted to gain access to this particular Bitcoin uh, application and server. But the collateral damage was uh, a lot of other people's management access to that VPS provider you know the place where you go and log in and say start server stop server and uh, backup start backup and all that the the control panel or whatever right those credentials were also stolen by the attackers the attackers had no need for that so they just released it right in public and using that uh, are you familiar with this tool called nmap network mapper so it's a tool, uh, uh, CLI based tool, which allows you to uh, do like, uh, you know, figure out uh, what are the devices in your network and get more information about it. The a site which hosts Nmap, Nmap is a tool used uh, across the world by security professionals, by IT professionals, a uh, lot of people, you know, with critical things to take care of. Uh, that website itself got caught in this and for a couple of hours, the download available on that website for nmap if you wanted to download and compile it yourself the source code in a uh, tar.gz file was backdoored okay so it can go to that that's what attackers can do now we have a re interesting problem of being in india uh, using uh, this registry for dot in domains which by law doesn't allow you to uh, mask uh, who is privacy so 79% of the ones you were protected with domain, domain who is privacy, right? So in the last set, uh, what we said was 40% uh, were exposing, 60% were not. Of the 60% people who had domain who is privacy enabled, out of that we were able to get the domain email ID of 79%. Our assumption is that the same email ID was used to register the .com or the .io as was to register the .in because the dot in registry does not allow you to have any kind of privacy as per uh, the requirement of registry dot in uh, don't allow any kind of data privacy and uh, that's a requirement you can't register a dot in without accepting that and you have to make sure that it's up to date and all that so you know now we have like a larger uh, number of people to look at what were we, what were we trying to do with it 46% of the total domain email IDs that we discovered, for that email, there is there are multiple passwords in that dump. And sad to say, 
there are only I think two passwords out of the whole data set which use a special character. Okay, it is the reality of the world that uh, people who manage servers reuse credentials and do not uh, believe in uh, you know uh, sufficiently random passwords. Okay, if the domain admin users have a habit of reusing passwords, and uh, it's typically a case when people have simple uh, and easy to remember passwords, attackers already know the password. They can go after the registrar website and try and log in, they can go after the primary email provider, it could be anything. Out of the total th uh, setup that we looked at, 59% had set up the lockdown configuration of client transfer prohibited. There are a bunch of these additional flags that registrars provide to you. With this flag enabled, what you get is, if the attacker does not have access to the email inbox of that particular uh, admin, they will not get their hands on the unlock code because the unlock code for you know disabling the client transfer prohibited will only reach the email inbox of the listed admin email uh, you know domain contact right. So, 40 percent of the total had not even enabled this check. It does not cost anything, it is part of your registrar right, you just have to go ahead and do it. So, what can I do about OS8? Can I protect myself? Well, is the world coming to an end? Uh, we don't want to make it like sound like it's a big bad thing. It's the dump has been there forever. Uh, I don't know if you know this. Dropbox uh, leaked 68 million passwords around four years ago. So if you still have access to your files, uh, you know maybe the attackers are not interested in your files, right? The thing to um, uh, understand and you know uh, uh, work with is always to manage and understand risk. This is just a good picture. I'm not going to explain each. Uh, item here, this looks nice, you can do analyze and whatever. Uh, anyone in on the internet can try my DNS records, right, that is a risk, that is how DNS is uh, uh, created, there is nothing you can do about it, so accept it, okay. If you want something to be extremely safe, do like a split horizon DNS or run an internal DNS so that your people are able to use domains to read something but it is not in the public whatever, right, maybe. People are able to see who my domain registrar is, can I do something about it? Absolutely nothing, it is ok. Oops. My ISP hosting company government is insecure, can I do something about it? Nope, accept that as a risk, it will impact everyone, right. My OS processor hardware company is insecure, I added that because meltdown inspector, uh, you cannot do much about it and will Virat Kohli ever score a century without? Is calling? No, right? He does not smile. That's just a cricket metaphor because I like cricket. Got nothing to do with the presentation otherwise. So, the checklist: Does my registrar support 2FA? Please understand how the 2FA reset process works. In our experience, the number one reason why people do not enable, who understand the advantages and benefits of two-factor authentication, do not enable it, is because they are worried: What if I lose my device? Right? which is why you have to understand what the reset process is for that particular uh, app or website. Make a note of what needs to be done if you lose your device or you know somehow uh, you lose or you forget something. Figure out what the process is because if someone is providing that as a security feature, they would have thought of usability. Is it good usability? Is it useful? Useful is different, but they would have thought of it. You should do that first and when you are clear about these two things, enable 2FA. In this day and age, not doing this makes no sense. There is nothing that you are gaining from not enabling this. If the authentication logs every time you enable 2FA can be stored, bonus, right? If your registrar allows for it, most will not, but most will, you know, give you a username, password, you can always scrape that data. If the answer is no, change your provider. There is, that is the only uh, recommendation here. Does my registrar support who is privacy? Yes, great, understand how to enable it. Enable domain who is privacy before configuring the domain to do anything. Do not uh, allow uh, bots and uh, scrapers to get data about your uh, you know whose details and put it on some random website and then you remember to enable it. That defeats the purpose because historical data is easy to find. And if your registrar does not support, change your provider. 
if that is not an option, accept that as a potential risk because dot in. If you are exposed, email provider supports to FA, understand how it works, enable to FA, if logs can be stored, great. I know, I think uh, with the G Suite apps now, you are able to get logs, uh, you can offload the logs, you can add some alerting on that if you want to. Change your provider, if your email provider does not support 2FA, there is no reason to have an email provider does not supporting 2FA, I mean, unless you are like with the government or something. Should I bother having a dot in, dot in domain? Uh, interesting question. Yes, if it is a legal compliance requirement, I am not sure if it is. If it is a business or a brand requirement, you are in India, you want to be known for doing stuff in India, maybe you want a dot in domain. You, over, you know, you worry about user, employee and partner vendors getting fished. Just imagine, uh, you do not register the dot in, you only have the dot com or the dot io and the attacker registers the dot in, makes a page which looks similar in login and starts uh, sending mails to people they know are your users, customers and all that, it will be a problem, right. I would recommend in any case, get the domain, use a non-domain email ID as domain admin, okay. This is going to be a controversial thing, but that is what I believe it should happen. You should protect the domain email ID by doing some do's, enable to FA, not SMS based, idly app based. Use a reputed third party provider like Gmail, I, uh, I personally think that they are likely to be far more safer and secure than most of us in the room. Make sure your password is sufficiently random, put in a process to change it after a fixed duration, I know this is the painful part, but you should try. Do not use that email address for registering to other websites, just do not do that. Email IDs are free, they give you free space, do not do that. Never reuse that password if you have the same email ID elsewhere, for some reason you need to, maybe you do uh, for whatever reason, right. Do not reuse the password. I am not saying do not do password reuse, I am not saying change your entire lifestyle, right. If that is a problem at least do it for one particular case, every uh, process can have exceptions, right. We uh, do the same for our dot in, we have a dot in, uh, I work for a company called AppSecO, so I am the registrant and there, there is a third party uh, email provider. You can follow this URL, we will upload the slides as well uh, after the talk, you can follow this URL and see if your uh, email, uh, sorry your domain is leaking this information. We went through the big ba uh, bad password dump to see if you know there was a mention of our uh, domain somewhere, it was not, so uh, a win for us. Basically tells us that uh, we are too small and our employees have had some discipline, we are a security company right, so they had the good sense to not use the AppSeco email ID everywhere, so that was good. Uh, if you would like to know, if your org is in the public DB, come see me later, right, uh, uh, the dump is ready. We just have to run a query, right? I promise we will not look at the password, we will just look at the usernames. We just want to know if it is there, right? We do not really care about the password. Colorful diagrams are a great way to understand risks and security. Uh, if you have questions about this, we will take them later because time. The first diagram is to explain domain hijacking, right? I said domain hijacking is bad, attackers can do bunch of things. Let us see what the diagram tells us. Right. What does the diagram tells us that you have an admin to manage the domain. Using that domain management process, you can do things like set up mail records. You tell the do on the domain that hey, you know what, my mail is handled by Rackspace, by uh, Google, by Microsoft or I run my own mail server, whatever, right. Those records are managed by the domain management and any other domain record. For example, to use bunch of third party services, uh, those services uh, use uh, pre-verification. Before you can add your domain to utilize that service, they say can you add this file to your uh, website or can you add this text record to your uh, uh, you know domain records, right. You could lo lose access to your domain on a third party if you lose access to the domain management. Does that make sense? Like for example, we use a, a issue tracking task management software in our office and to be able to use the single sign on feature offered by them, 
single sign on meant that when we go to the login of that uh, third party uh, task management software, we put in our corporate email ID, it sends us to the you know the place where we authenticate with our provider and then come back to the site. I am sure you have seen that workflow somewhere, yes, okay, we will not ring, so okay, yes. For them to enable it for appseco dot, uh, dot com domain, that is our primary domain, right. We had to verify that we were in control of the domain. In customer support language, we are the owners of the domain, right. But the reality is whosoever is in control of creating that record can add that domain. Now, do not ask me what they will do by misusing a third party by adding a domain, maybe they have a use case. I do not know, right, just, just saying. Employees typically look at uh, mail records, domain records and do things with that, like uh, employee says you know what I built this fancy new app which is supposed to go on my Kubernetes cluster, it is called cluster 101 dot whatever uh, domain, uh, hey can you uh, you know add the record, right. So the IT person in the company will be like you know what give me the external IP of your cluster and public IP or the node IP or whatever and I will add it. Right? So, they do some editing here, but they may not be able to remove stuff and all that. And obviously, customers online, the domain becomes the way the customer identifies you. The same way, you know it is a ICIC or HDFC or whatever bank branch by seeing the board outside. You understand? If you are a customer, the only way you know that oh, there is a branch because it you can see a board outside. If you are paranoid, you are like you know what, I will go to the official website of uh, my bank and check if a, a branch is supposed to exist in, in this locality or not. You understand, online the domain is doing that for you. That is how we have translated what is an offline security construct online. So, it is important. What are the threats and risks hijacking? Sometimes registrars get hacked, this has happened to bunch of security companies, this has happened to uh, large uh, uh, internet providers where the pers you know the uh, provider who had uh, the, they had registered the domain with that was hacked which enabled changing of records and domain hijacking was possible. Email theft, it is a simple one, people change the MX record right the mail exchange record and now the emails which are meant for your mail server are going to the uh, you know the server which is the domain is saying is configured and it is not yours. User phishing obviously if the email is no longer in your control phishing is uh, perfect uh, your client will not be able to tell the difference. Customer malware right people want to go after your users and do some malware stuff. Password reuse uh, I promise is the last colorful diagram. The have fun slides after this. Users, do I need to explain this one? <laughs> How many of you reuse passwords? No name and names. Cool. See, everyone in my team does the same. It is just easy, right. Uh, in my personal case, the first time I started using a password manager was when I realized that I end up signing up on so many websites that I do not remember where I have signed up. It is very frustrating, like I know I got a sign up confirmation email in my inbox, but what is this keyword I should search for? So, the solution I came up was that yeah, you know what, I will use a password manager because one of the things it will store is the URL where I signed up, right. I did not even think of a security use case. So, whatever works for you, uh, I am really glad you are all young, you can remember all the websites you sign up at uh, in your head, but uh, you know what, everyone gets older, you are not, uh, there is nothing you can do about that risk. So, threats and re risks are unauthorized access, lateral movement, privilege escalation, whoa, you have done, you just added three, this is Abhishek's slide, I blame him. This is about my company, we offer uh, pragmatic security advice, we do cool things, we are a very technical company, so fe feel free to ask all your technical questions to us uh, outside. This is, these are the four of us at the uh, conference today and tomorrow, we are wearing AppSeco t-shirts, I do not have another one, so I am not going to wear this one tomorrow, but 
you, you see my face. And uh, oh yeah, we are running a clinic, I am not sure what time, uh, they will let us know, but we are around, uh, it will be somewhere in the vicinity. Uh, we will again take questions on security. Uh, all application security, network security questions are fine, OSN security questions are fine, we will answer those. Uh, for the pre presentation we were being a little 